and so continuing with our series of doing CB radios on a shoestring budget we're going to do an FM only set with an AM signal generator and this AM signal generator over there I bought off eBay for £10 and it's an old valve boat anchor and it does allegedly cover up to 100 mega cycles and we've had it on for two hours so it's about as stable as it's going to be now this radio which we're not demonstrating how to tune the York 861 this demonstration is how to tune anything UK FM on a budget and this is a set I just dragged off the shelf and it's lovely and dusty in fact I think we'll do some cleaning of it as part of this video I know it's on frequency and it's important we always do transmit first then we know they're on frequency we know the VCOs are working now I could connect that to a frequency counter and it's probably about as stable as a bag of worms on these frequencies it's probably great for tra doing transistor radios on medium wave but I think by the time we get up to um, not far off VHF top end of HF I don't think it's going to be that stable now we're going to be using the power supply that we serviced the other day and this is what I've been waiting for a standalone cyanide meter and I managed to get this from a gentleman in Canada off eBay it wasn't I think it was about 90 pounds because it's cost something in postage to get here and of course it also um, goes without saying it's working on 120 volts so we have a transformer under the bench this is cyanide meter and we don't need to have an FM modulation to use a cyanide meter because what cyanide is doing it's signal to noise ratio and what we're able to show on the meter is that when we have shall we say the best possible signal to no noise ratio and we can achieve that by tuning the radio so as we back off the attenuation of the signal generator obviously the radio gets noisier and then we can tune that noise for a better signal to noise ratio which is indicated on the meter now our test instruments here uh, we have the all-in-one Marconi and the all-in-one Schlumberger and all of those kind of things but they have built-in cyanide meters and I wanted to do this as a standalone and I remember in Practical Wireless the UK radio magazine there was a project to build a cyanide meter uh, in the 1980s I seem to recall and I know that that's well worth doing but although these can be quite expensive new they can be picked up less than a hundred pounds so there we are with a dead cheap power supply a dead cheap signal generator costing ten pounds oops wrong way not on the normal camera today we're on uh, one of Mr Chippy's uh, Sony ones we've got the attenuator because the attenuation built into the advanced signal generator doesn't go as low as what this CB radio is capable of receiving at so we need further attenuation so we'll add a few more DB's in there and so we're going to be doing this your K61 I say this isn't a demonstration on how to tune a your K61 and I think we'll just wait for Mr Chippy to arrive and he can do the demonstration so uh, that's it so far oh I know what we will do I'll tell you what we will do this cyanide meter also has a built-in um, millivolt meter now you remember if you've looked at the previous shoestring video we were doing where we used the cheap and cheerful new signal generator and we tuned an AM FM modern set in AM mode with a, a cheap signal generator and then we switched it to FM and did the um, we did the detector using a cheap uh, CB walkie talkie with a call tone well I've dug that same CB walkie talkie out we'll select this channel 30 and we'll start by setting the detector Let's see if we can hear something okay so we've set the 
sign up meter to AC volts. So whereas we had the electronic voltmeter and a little oscilloscope uh, across the previous video, I'm just going to have this meter across. Now these uh, this call tone on this cheap CB walkie-talkie channel 30, which is loads of channel 30 on the radio. And if I press the call tone, it's going to give me an FM tone, which is there. And I've got the volume quite low, but you can see that indicated on the meter. So by adjust adjusting the detector on the radio, and say so we're not demonstrating a particular radio, so if you look at the videos I've done on different radios, they will tell you where the detector is. We'll now adjust that for peak. You can see it's very pronounced, very obvious, where that peak is. And that really needs to be the first thing to do because if that's out you may find a lot of difficulty tuning the rest of the set. So we'll pause it at that, we'll wait for Mr Chippy to turn up and then we'll have him tune the radio with this setup and he has never used a sign meter. He's been working with me from since about 1996 and he's never done sign -ad. so how about that? Okay, and Mr. Chippy has now arrived in the building, so I thought we would get him to uh, adjust this York 861, which was specially detuned for the demonstration. So we've got the signal generator there set somewhere near. It's so difficult to get that signal generator spot on where we want it. We've found it easier to tune it somewhere near and then adjust the radio to channel 24. It turns out it's on at the moment. It's been on it's been warming up for two hours so things should be about as stable as we're going to get them so we've got our attenuator there and i'm going to put the camera on the we might find it there we are on the cyanide meter and mr chippy if you would like to adjust one of the receive things of course that's the word So as the signal to noise ratio improves, we get a reading on the meter. We might need to put more attenuation in. Well, that's peak there. I think we need a bit more. Just hold on. Yeah. Mm. Do you want to do the next one? No, I'll just see that that's... Because it might be interactive. Yeah. I mean... Yeah, it's not getting any better. I think we need more attenuation. Yep. We've had to add the attenuator box because this signal drainage doesn't go lower than one microvolt. Let's <clears throat> go back through and make sure they don't further. So it's quite pronounced, as you can see, how yes. we get a really sensible reading using the, the sign and meter. So that is how we've done it on a budget. Theoretically, you could calibrate the signal, the signal meter on the radio from the signal generator, but um, I wouldn't risk it on something as uh, antiquated as this. But we've used an AM signal generator without its tone. Mr. Chip, you just switch the tone on the signal generator. That's AM on top of uh, on AM, so it's kind of slope detecting it. You can switch that off again now. It certainly wouldn't be safe to set anything up using that. So I'll just turn our little. Can you turn it to channel 30, please? I'll just put this back on there. And switch this on. Uh, testing one two. Do you want to just turn the volume up so we can hear me saying testing one two? Where we go one two one two. 
Oh, it's um, it's AVCing me. Okay. Anyway, that is now receiving. And what we're now going to do is something we else haven't demonstrated before. We're going to clean the case on this radio. So what we're first going to do is we're going to we've got that. We're going to take the loudspeaker off there. We're going to take the other half of the case off. We're going to take the control panel and the knobs off and we're going to run it through the company dishwasher and that's the first part of this procedure so we'll back to you in 25 minutes when the company dishwasher has finished so on to cleaning the york 861 i said we would uh, carry on with a bit of cleaning we've stuck the cases in the company dishwasher along with the knobs we were going to put the front panel in unfortunately this kind of front panel the microphone socket is captive and we're not going to uh, remove the microphone socket and its earthing ring just um, for this so Mr Chippy is going to clean this as part of the demonstration now the first thing is on the top left if you want to point to that Mr C the, the top left not he doesn't the left where you put the the stick it was all nasty and sticky well, it's on the top right as well. oh, it's on the top right as well is it well the first thing we've done is to use a label remover uh, I don't know if this is available domestically, but it's. Oh, there's this one. We've got the we use the service R one, and we use the LRM one, which comes from RS Components, it's which has a built-in brush. Electrolube. Oh, it's Electrolube, is it? Yes. Le so LRM the, thing. So they're yeah. both trade things, but the service R one may be available um, on eBay or something like that to to non-trade users. So. It, we've let that soak in, haven't we? So how long have you left that? Well, about 15 minutes. Now. Right. So we're going to see if it comes off. This will be interesting. And the answer is yes, but it takes some work. Normally if it's a new label, the, the label remover soaks into it and it just peels off and wipes away, but this is... Um, well, it's 35 year old radius. Yeah, it, it, the label's been removed a long time ago and the glue's gone rock hard. Sometimes we use isopropyl alcohol, but we may be in danger of stripping no, the, paint the paint off. off yeah. He's just using kitchen towel. Not that he's ever seen a kitchen, but you know what I mean. So that, the stuff on the right hand side's come off now, but we need a bit more. Yeah, so we have a further application of that. Takes my off. So I might need leave in a few more minutes. Yes. Uh, While that um, dries, what do you want to do anything with the front panel? Not dries, takes effect. Well, I do, but yeah. that, that's just running. So I okay. Don't want to so we'll come. Around. We'll we'll come back to the camera uh, when it's uh, had another few minutes to uh, to soak in. Okay. So back to just turn it round so we can see that you've actually cleaned that top now. Uh, with the uh, label remover. Meanwhile, the parts have come back from the dishwasher. Uh, we've got the knobs back. And Mr. Chippy's going to clean the front panel. What are you going to use? Foam cleanser? Yeah, but a foam cleanser and this lovely thing I bought from a certain well known German supermarket. Would it be Aldi or Little? Uh, not Aldi. Not Aldi? Yep. Yes. Okay. So this comes with uh, interchangeable brushes. I use these to clean uh, guitar amplifier cabinets up. So it's not your mum's toothbrush? No. So no. it's a big toothbrush type thing. Oh, and it, that's good. Isn't and it? it works very well. Uh, we use a gentler brush on this. Is it rechargeable or do you buy batteries? No, it's four double A's. Right. So what I'll do in this case, rather than spray foam cleanser all over the, kit, over the uh, front panel, I'll put it on the brush itself. And then we'll just somebody said to me that they find that this service cell phone cleanser leaves a sticky residue. I've not found that, have you? No. Oh. We'll need to put a bit more on because it's just Spread the muck about a bit. I wonder if this has been a smoked on radio. It's a well worn radio, you've only got to look at the knob. Well, 
This is a case of finishing that off with the paper towel now. Mr. Chippy usually works on guitar amps and you can imagine that they have been in a previous life in a smoking environment, especially before the smoking van in... Did I say van? Smoking van in yeah, public smoking. places. Smoking van. Well, if you want to smoke, you go in the van now, do you? Yeah. Is that like a Ford Transit? Yeah. Other brands, other better brands available. So it's a way of getting into nooks and crannies. So, I mean, it's going to take a bit more doing this, but you can see it's, yes. it's come up a lot better already, but it's just a case of getting get into the corners. So I'll probably have to go over it a few more yes. times. So we'll come back to the video when uh, we're probably about putting the knobs on. And so to finish, Mr Chippy's now put this back together. So it's looking quite reasonable. There's quite a lot of wear on the knobs. It's a high mileage set, but we're not going to do anything about that. Perhaps we could respray them, but we're not bothered. It's a high mileage set. It works very well indeed. We've previously done the transmit on the test bench. You've seen us do the receive. Uh, we haven't done the meter lamp and we've gone and screwed it back together. What we discovered whilst putting it back together is that it's never had the protective cellophane stuff taken off the back. So uh, how, how impressive is that, that it's 30 odd years old and it's still got the protection on the back there. Um, we were interested to see the fading on the loudspeaker. Uh, it must have been upside down at some time. And um, the loudspeaker, is, where the speaker grill is, is, is faded on its cone. So there we go, that's the York 861 and that was the uh, budget way of of tuning the receiver on an FM only set using a Synad meter and a boat anchor of a £10 uh, signal generator which was AM only. So there are ways of doing it without using a £12,000 test set. So thank you for watching.